actually went to the tackle shop looking for preformed caddis wings and I couldn't find any so I've decided to make my own and this works out really well so I'm going to show you how I do it. Now this is just a, a hen pheasant and you can see I've cut, I've taken away the fibres at the bottom, cut out the point of the hackle and I've formed a nice shape. Now I've used bug bond to do this and I'll show you how I do it. Now this is the, the hackles I'm using is a, is a saddle patch, hen patch, just a normal chicken speckled speckled hen and uh, I'm just using the larger feathers at the top, the well marked. Now you could use the covert feathers from the wings which I have done as well uh, from any wings or like say hen pheasant, grouse, things like that and they'll make a nice wing as well. Now the first thing I do is going to remove the fluff. Now you'll see I've got a, basically these are just, that's a disposable glove. Just these ones you can buy in the shops for whatever, um, basically to work with any chemicals. And I'm using the bug bond and I'm going to wipe it on. Now, in this feather, what I can do is take out the, basically, centre of the hackle. And that there will tie a larger caddis button. Then, same feather, just removing some of the, the fibres from the bottom, from either side. And then again, take out the centre of the feather. Go in with your scissors and trim it away. There we go. And that there basically, the larger one will do a size 8s, 10s. So a size 12s, 14s maybe for the middle section. And for the tip, you could do probably a 14 and 16 or so. I'm just going to take the tip of the, the feather out. And then if I can just remember to take away some of the, the fibres. So you've got a stem to hold. And there, that will form the small caddis wing for you. Now we take and we tie a size, use a size 12, now there's size 12 now, to hold it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my hackle pliers, it's much easier to do that, just hold the stem, now you can get your regular, original bug bond, or in this case I'm going to use the clear, or light, sorry, and all I'm going to do is put some right down the centre of the feather, onto the stem. Now don't put too much on. You'll see it just in the centre of the feather. And then I'm just going to obviously use the glove. Just run my fingers lightly through it. Spreading the bug bond on both sides. Get the shape into the feather that you want. Into the basically the wing you're looking for. You obviously want them, the tips to be lined up. Make sure it's spread but you don't want it shiny. I don't like it shiny and bright. I want it to be quite dull, that's why I don't put too much on. And then come in with your torch, your bug bone torch, and then set it. Now you'll see the feather slightly cur curling there, turning round, that's it setting. Now the good thing about bug bond is it stays flexible, it ties in extremely well. And there we are. And that's your wings. Now you, I would sit and do a few. Just sit and do all the, the smaller ones so you've got plenty on your desk. And then once that, you can obviously throw the disposable glove away and then tie your fly. Now the thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread and tan and eight O. I've waxed the thread, so I'm going to start at the eye. But doing, say, three or four turns and take away the waste. Now I'm going to put horns on this fly and I'm going to use basically some bron a bronze mallard. This is a large bronze mallard feather. And all I need is two of the fibres and tear them off. And then just tie these for the eye, just slightly longer than the length of the hook. And then work my way down and remove the excess. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie in a fine silver wire, which is going to protect, which I'm going to put underneath the body of this fly is some silver tinsel. It's a medium silver tinsel I'm going to tie in. And uh, it's this one here, number 14. Uh, it's a silver and gold. There's gold one side and silver the other. Let's take off a length. And then we tie this on so that you can see it basically on your side. So when I, and the gold showing. So when I bring this up, that the silver is going to be the prominent colour. Now bring it round with the turn. It's a thread. 
take it down. Now I'm going to turn the hook upside down so I can see exactly where I am. Just watch your, your rub doesn't come around too far. Just slightly around the bend to see where it is. That's fine. Just watch the point of the hook because it will actually cut, cut into that tinsel and break it. Now for the for the body, what I'm going to use, I've got some tanned, dye tanned CDC. CDC puffs it says, but they're more CDC feathers than puffs. Now I need two. So basically, I'm going to set them together, put them on my desk just now. Because what I'm going to do is, anti-clockwise, I'm going to spin the bobbin, which opens the thread, turns up. And then using the needle, I'm going to split the thread. Just come in with the needle, close to the body, because that's the easiest part to actually catch it. And then split evenly split the thread. Now the, the easiest thread to use for this I would say is UTC or a Danvos or Flymaster or something like that. Now that thread is waxed, so it's much easier to hold or it stays together well. Especially when you bring the or spin the dobbin. Now what I'm gonna do here is I've got the two feathers, C D C feathers, and I'm gonna tear off the fibres from both sides. Now the smaller flies, obviously you only need one feather. There's plenty of CDC fibres on it for that. And then get your thread again. CDC, put it into your split thread and then spread it. And then spin. Spin the bobbin clockwise. And this will tighten the thread turns up. Just keep going. You'll see it's starting to go. You drop more, just to tighten up a wee bit better. That's fine. And then, basically, you just want to wind up the body. Take it two thirds of the way up, just drawing back these fibres. There we go, nice and tight. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got some Velcro, and I'm going to basically bring CDC fibres up from both sides. Just lift it up onto the top of the hook. Just be careful with your thread. There we go. And then, keep the, th the hook upside down. Bring the tinsel up, making sure it's right underneath. Catch this down. Now, you don't have to do this. This is something uh, I like to do as well. I mean, in some of the patterns, and it works extremely well. But, I mean, just having the CDC up the body will still make a nice fly. And then, basically what you've got now is a, a Matuka type wing, but you must protect the tinsel, so this is what the fine wire is for. And you just bring it up through, making a space for the, I mean this is a, an extra small wire, it's very fine. Just all the way up, just making the space, nice and tight. The UTC wire's one of the better ones. That's got a fine coat on it. And it seems to last much longer. And it's strong as well. Cross your thread, make sure it's tied down. And then take your time and bend and break the wire away. Now at this point what I'm going to do is basically brush the CDC so it's going to lie towards the back of the hook is acting like a nice under wing that helps keep the fly up. And now we're ready for our wing. Just a wee check just to see how things are. That looks looks okay. And this are preformed wings using the the bug bond. Just get it on the top. Lie when I mean you're looking for it to well over over the back of the hook. Now it's probably the, the wing length is the full length of the hook, but because it's further down, it's going to sit over the back. And all I'm going to do is fold the wing, or one of the wings down either side, come in with two or three turns, see how it's going to sit. And you want it low, just see how it's sitting there. Now it looks okay. Now, basically, I'm going to take out one or two of these fibers. Now, 
take them away to open up the, the bottom of the wing. If it's sitting right and it just means taking out a couple to get it to sit right, there's nothing wrong with that. And then once you're happy, screw it in with another good few turns. You see the wing you get a lovely low caddis type wing that you're looking for. And then take away the excess. Just be careful with your, your horns. Just lift this up. Now this, the, the bug bond does, it stays flexible. And it's much easier to work with. Don't put too much on though. I don't like it too heavy. Um, basically what you'll find is, if you put it on too heavy, uh, it causes the fly to spin. This here has still got a bit of softness in it. And don't worry too much if even if you lose one or two of the fibres, it will still be okay, and uh, it'll still it'll still catch fish, as long as you have the overall shape. Then what we want to do is, oh, I'm going to use a, this is a, a hen neck, and it's basically like a, it's called ginger brown, and it's a nice colour and it suits the colour of fly that I'm tying, and don't be shy with using some of these genetic hens. Because they're ideal, they're, they've got their they're kind of an in between hen, cock, fibre. I mean, they're a good tri fly hackle, and I like them, so. Let me tie this in by the tip. Let's make sure I've got some wax on the thread. Two or three turns down, and we fold the tip back for security. And then come back down a wee bit, about halfway or so. And then remove the tip of the hackle, folding the hackle back and doing one turn in front of the other. Just take your time, no big rush. Working your way down the shank, or down the thorax area. Now as I say, I'm leaving a space probably around about, I would say, a good mill, mill and a half or so. That's plenty. So a nice 90 degree bend into the stem, cross with your thread, and tie in your hackle. Trim away the rubbish and then tidy up. A couple of fibres of this, I'm going to take them away. Now, I've got one of these the CDC feathers, the tan one again. Now, I'm going to take some of the fibres off and I'm going to use this as a dubbing. I'm simply going to just dub it onto your thread, it's very easy, just like you would set it to the side of the, the thread and then one way, twist it onto the thread. It's easy to do. And then wind in front just to form like a head area. I'm just going to lift the horns a bit and do a turn in front. This tapers the fly off. A wee bit more wax. And then we finish. And then I'm going to a wee bit shape into the, the horns. Don't have to do this, this is more for your eye than anything. Or a person that's fishing it, just rubbing my nail onto the top of it. And this will lift the horn up. So I'll do this one a bit more. And there we are. Now you could leave the hackle as it is just now, or you can come in and trim it. So that the fly sits very low and flat on the surface. Leave it. Leave the pit, this on top. This is okay. It's not going to do it any harm. And then, obviously, you can use what floating you have. Dry shake or some other ones. There's uh, frog's fanny, which is a good one. Uh, doesn't sound very. I mean, not like saying it in public, like, but it's a very good uh, floating for CDC. Or a silicon, I like to use a silicon, a muslin silicon, which I rub in my fingers to make it go clear. Prefer to do it before, the night before, and then rub it into these fibres. And you'll find as long as you keep the fly dry, use amadou to dry it, if you've got a fish or two, then just dry it and give it a setting, and straight back out. And your fly will keep catching. But anyway, as you can see, it makes a, a nice caddis pattern. Very simple, really. Uh, just take your time uh, when you're tying it. Anyway, that's the my version of the bug bond, or using bug bond to form the wings for a caddis pattern. And it's very simple and easy to do. Hope you enjoyed that. And that's the tan caddis.